Virgin Most Powerful Radio, sharing the gospel with clarity and charity. I'm a soldier for Christ. I'm a soldier for Christ. I'm a soldier. No, they'll never take us under because we're bringing truth like thunder. Raining on your speakers like a ton of bricks Hold the cross high cause we're Catholics Fight the good fight with the truth Stand tall with the truth I'm a warrior for Christ I'm in love with the truth Love God, save souls, slay error Go stronger Holy hour of power Hope is the theological virtue by which we desire The kingdom and eternal life and our happiness based upon the promises of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We don't rely on our own strength. That's Pelagianism. Amen. We rely on the help of the Holy Spirit. Catechism 1817. Terry, I'm reporting for duty, uh, sir. I'm reporting for duty, sir. And with that kind of introduction, I'm saying, sign me up, man. I love it. <laughs> Jess, I'm excited about today. I'm excited about life because we're less than a week away for two things. One... We're going to have an election, and, I, and I'm hoping and praying that all committed Christians are going to vote the right way for life, and we will have another four years with President Trump. I'm just being honest. That's how excited I am about next week. Also, I'm more excited, though, about teaching people the gospel, uh, teaching people the Bible, and that's what we do at Virgin Most Powerful. Today's topics are very interesting, Jess. We're going to be talking about the Pope Francis' comments about approving gay civil unions was the translation accurate? And it's interesting because some people are saying no, but I think you're going to find out they were. But the most important topic is this. Cardinal Mueller, former prefect to the Doctrine of the Faith, his article is called Pope's Endorsement of Homosexual Unions Has No Authority for Catholics. Wow, when I read that article, I was like, wow, this guy, he says it all. You need to hear this. Also, Jess, we've got some good news stories. We got a new movie coming out on St. Maximilian Kolbe. I would love to tell people mm. later in the show about. And uh, it's, it's a full life, full length movie that I think will inspire people. Also, wow. we're going to talk about an exorcist saying the powerful answer to all the problems in the United States. What is it? Because Satan is raging and spreading all his errors. And uh, this is going to be also very, very yeah. interesting. And violence. And Errors violence. and violence. Errors and violence is spread. Look look what happened in Philadelphia. I have to just say, a thousand people were looting uh, in Philly all over the city. And, uh, you know, the mayor, nobody did anything about it until the government uh, put in the, um, the, the soldiers to come in, the National Guard to cl- just shut it down. The point of it is we're out of control. But, Jess, before we go to all of that, I think I texted you and asked if we could do the reading from the uh, from oh, yes. Ephesians because I'm telling you, it fits our show today, bro. Absolutely. Ephesians chapter 6. This is the chapter where St. Paul, he really uh, goes into the, the... I think he just basically builds on what, what St. Augustine said, Terry. Yeah. Uh, you have the city of God, right? which is the, the city of Abel, yes. and the city of men, right. which is the city of Cain. And that's what he's building on in today's first reading. He says, <clears throat> brothers and sisters, by the way, just I don't, this is something I just want to point out. Mm-hmm. Notice in the Bible, it always says men be male before female. Brothers and sisters. You notice that mm-hmm. Adam and Eve. Okay. And the reason is, is, is because there's the word of God is written in the order of creation and also in the order of responsibility. So when somebody at mass a lector says, sisters and brothers, it doesn't say that. They're, they're, they're flipping it on you right at Mass. They're not supposed to do that, and it happens all the time. Just want to point that out, okay? Yep. Brothers and sisters, draw your strength from lifting weights. No, it doesn't say that. <laughs> draw your strength from the Lord and from his mighty power. Yeah. Sounds like uh, what David said, the battle belongs to the Lord. Amen. Put on the armor of God. As Ruben's always saying that now, but he's always saying, Armor up, armor up, church up, pray up. I like that. Put on the armor of God so that you may be able to stand firm against the tactics of the devil. Now, notice he's going to mention all the, the, the tools that we're supposed to put on, strap on. Everything is a defensive weapon except one tool. The sword's an offensive weapon. I'll point that out. So everything is a defensive weapon that you're supposed to put on to defend yourself from the diabolical, but you got one offensive weapon. I'll get into that. For our struggle is not with flesh and blood, 
And ultimately, in other words, ultimately, our struggle is not with like Antifa or BLM or liberals or progressives or Marxists. He says, but with the principalities, those are types of demons. Mm -hmm. With the powers, types of demons. With the world rulers, types of demons of this present darkness. With the evil spirits, obviously demons, in the heavens. The Greek word is a cosmos in the heavenly places, in the heavenly realm. That's what it means. Now, he's going to tell us how to soldier up here. This is, this is now confirmation. He says, therefore, put on the armor of God that you may be able to resist on the evil day and having done everything to hold your ground. Amen. Hold your ground. Or as some people say, as, as St. James says, resist him, resist the devil or hold your ground. means the same thing. James and Paul are talking about the same thing. Well, how do you hold your ground? How do you resist the evil on that day? You have to put on the armor of God. Here it goes. So stand fast. That means hold your ground with your loins girded in truth. Okay. Next, clothe with righteousness as a breastplate. Righteousness means a state of grace. Okay. Uh, loins girded in truth. That means you're, you're basically your body is held together by the by the word of truth, which is the word of God. And then it says, and your feet shot in readiness for the gospel of peace. In other words, you have to be ready to go to and fro, announcing the gospel from the rooftops, kind of like you're in the Titanic. And letting them know, hey, the Titanic's going down. Come on over here. Jump on the lifeboat. It says Jesus on it. It goes on to say, In all circumstances, hold faith as a shield. Ah, faith as a shield. Why? He tells you why. To quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. All right? So demons are constantly projecting evil thoughts, evil images, apparitions, words, vulgarities, Im imagination, phantasms into your mind how do, how do you protect your mind from that you hold faith as a shield that's how you block all those demonic diabolical projections in your mind into your five senses and then the bible says and take the helmet of salvation the helmet of salvation which which means what put on the mind of christ know your catholic faith study your catholic faith that's what it means in other words, saturate your mind with, with, with the truth of God's word. Saturate your mind with meditation and contemplation and prayer. Then he goes on to say, And the sword of the spirit, ah, offensive weapon. Now we go on the offense. Attack, charge, offensive. And the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Notice this is something interesting. Mm -hmm. Where does all Catholic prayer come from? All Catholic prayer comes from directly or indirectly from the word of God. For, and so the word of God, your prayer is a weapon that you project into the cosmos. Who, who lives in the cosmos? Demons do. Angels and demons. You're projecting the sword of the spirit, which is splitting. It is injuring, wounding, and tormenting demons. Who teaches this? The desert fathers. Every single one of the desert fathers says that your prayer, because it's the word of God, it injures and it torments demons. Goes on to say. Now, how do I know that the sword of the Spirit is prayer? How do I know that? Next verse tells you. St. Paul says, with all prayer, he just talked about the Word of God being a sword. So now he's calling you to what? Push-ups? Sit-ups? Pull-ups? No. Nope. No. Prayer. Prayer is the sword of the Spirit. It's right in the text there. With all prayer and supplication, pray at every opportunity in the Spirit. To that end, be watchful with all perseverance and supplication for all the holy ones and also for me that speech may be given to me that speech may be given to me to open my mouth to make known with boldness and that's what we're trying to do in virgin most powerful Amen. open our mouths with boldness the mystery of the gospel for which i am an ambassador in chains yep if joe biden and harris wins terry and me may be in chains as long as as well as many <laughs> other ones other people so that I may have the courage to speak as I must the word of the Lord. Thank Thanks, you to God. God. Jesse, that last comment made me laugh because I mentioned that to Bishop Strickland, who's also on our network. And I said, when you're, you're on your right, I said, Jesse Romero would be crucified to your left. <laughs> and I'll be on your right, Bishop Strickland. We're, we're going to stick with you on this one. Hey, Jess, that was a great commentary. I'm glad we had that first reading. Uh, let's bring in Fulton Sheen because it fits right in again for our readings.
Let's bring him in on that choo-choo train, that locomotive. All right. He's running a little late, but here's what he has to say, Jess. He says, not many men want to die to their lower selves. It costs so much. Some prefer to have a cosmic religion which puts no restraint on their pride nor curbs their passions. Jesse, I'm going to repeat that because it fits our culture right now, even even our, in our church. Not many, whether they're homosexuals or heterosexuals, anyone. Not many men want to die to their lower selves. It costs so much. Some prefer to have a cosmic religion which puts no restraint on their pride nor curbs their passions. Jesse, cosmic, you know what I think of? I think of, you know, saving plastic bottles. Okay, I do, but that's not my religion. It's not, you know... My religion is to get to heaven. And I think that what Sheen is saying is that we have to die to self, whether you know, a man, a woman, whoever, we all have to say no to ourselves. And I think that's a, that's a, a theme throughout the gospel that Jesus has taught in his lifetime, and we need to pass on to, next, to the next generation. That's my yep, take uh, on that one, Jess. Yeah, Terry, Al- F- F- v- Venerable Fulton Sheen says, without Easter, uh, oh, there's no, good no Friday? Easter without Good Friday. Right, no, no yeah. yeah, without Good Friday, there's no Easter. Yeah. Yep. I'm reading it right here. It's Time Magazine. It says Bishop Sheen, no Easter <laughs> without yeah. Good Friday. Absolutely. Right in front of, it's right in front of me. No, that's good, Jess. And that, and that is so true because how can you get Easter without the crucifixion? You can't. And that's what Christ is saying to us. And that's what our church has been telling us throughout 2,000 years. So if you ever hear anything other than uh, you know, then denying yourself and pick up your cross. That's not the Catholic faith. Hey, Jess, when we come back, we're going to talk. I want to play, I want to play a clip to her when we come of back. President real Trump. Quick. Yep. Yeah, and then we'll, yeah. We'll play President Trump's clip acknowledging who Jesus Christ is <laughs> on the Terry and Jesse show on Virgin Most Powerful. And then we'll get right in to the question about the translation of Pope Francis Absolutely. and much, much more here on the, on Virgin Most Powerful, the Terry and Jesse show. Don't turn that down. We're going to come right back. Help the Helpless, a Minnesota St. Paul nonprofit organization chaired by Father of Tear and volunteers, is humbly asking you for your kind support to help the poor and the handicapped children in India and Ecuador. Through financial support from the help of the helpless benefactors, the children are provided with clothing, food, education, shelter, and the teachings of the Catholic Church. The mission is to help children thrive and become self-sufficient young adults leading productive lives. We also provide aid to poor families in Ecuador with food baskets, medicines, medical assistance, and help with funeral needs for the deceased. The work in India is done by Father Antonio's organization, St. Mary's. In Ecuador, the work is being done by the Servant Sisters of the Home of Mother. You can call us at 877-762-8857. To learn more, please visit our website, www.helpthehelpless.org. God bless you. If you shop on Amazon.com, there's an easy way to support Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Just visit smile.amazon.com and type in Catholic Resource Center under the desired charity. Now, when you log into your Amazon account and purchase products, a portion of it will automatically go to support Virgin Most Powerful Radio at no cost to you. Thanks in advance for supporting CRC and VMPR, and may God richly bless you and your family. This is Terry Barber. I want to thank you for your support here at Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Here's an easy way to do it. If you're going to sell or buy a house, call Real Estate for Life, 877-543-3871, because they're going to get you a Christ-centered agent to purchase your home or to sell your home. And at the close of escrow, a portion of his commission goes right back to Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Call 877-543-3871. Thank you so much for your support. Welcome back to the Terry and Jesse Show. To join the conversation, call 888 526 2151. Now, 
Here's Terry and Jesse. Straight talk Catholicism. Terry, can we play the clip of uh, President Trump? Absolutely. Play it again. Rich. He says it's coming. Hey, Jesse, before we do that, I want to just set... You're bilingual, so you know Spanish. You know other languages, too. And when we talk about this comment, I want to get I read into, it in Spanish. Yes, there you go. You read it in Spanish. So there you have it. Mr. Engineer, are we ready to play President Trump's clip? All right, Jess, we're going to wait after this. Let's talk okay, about, sure. the, about the... Yeah, uh, good article. I read it in Spanish. Uh, wait, wait, wait. It's, a, it's a little tricky thing. Masks, no masks, everything. You can do all you want. But, you know, you still need help from the boss. We need help from the boss. That's what happened. We need help. Yeah, we need help. It's all right to say. Now, they'll criticize me for that. How dare he say that? How dare he say that? No, I'll say it. I'll say it. I'll say it. Somebody said to me the other day, you're the most famous person in the world by far. I said, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. He said, yes, you are. I said, no. He said, who's more famous? I said, Jesus Christ. I'm not taking any chances. I'm not going to have an argument. Hey, I'm not having any arguments. Jesus Christ. I'm not going to take any chances. I'll give it, I guarantee. And let me look up and I'll say, and it's not even close. <laughs> <laughs> what a breath of fresh air, Terry. I love hearing last, that. From the last president uh, yep. who was uh, inviting, who canceled the Christian uh, uh, week of pray, or weekend of prayer at the White House, canceled it. And he brought in imams to be praying in Arabic, and he'd pray along with them. And he also said... Uh, uh, the U.S. is not a Christian nation. Barack Obama said that. What a complete 180 from what uh, President Trump has to say about Jesus Christ and Christianity. Well said. And, you know, Jess, this is just the facts. And, again, if it was any other way, I would state it. This is just uh, what the man said. And I believe that. In his own words. In his own words. And I believe that when Christmas comes, he will say Merry Christmas and stop well, saying Happy for, Holidays. He's been doing it for four years. Eric. Right. He's yeah. been yeah. and every year he, he says that. He doesn't do Happy Holidays. And then he reads the, the narrative, the the Christmas narrative, and I just love it to have my president. I know Reagan did that. I've heard other presidents do that, but not not what he just said about what Jesus Christ being more popular than him and leading, saying that Jesus Christ is the boss. I love having that comment come from the president of the United States. I never thought I'd ever hear that, Jess. Yeah, Terry, because he's a patriarch of the country, and yep. and and his uh, wife also adorns the White House with uh, very Catholic sensibilities during Christmas. Good. Well, let's move Terry, to the. Yeah, go ahead, Jess. Article here from LifeSite News. It yep. says painful, to, but, to, but we have to talk about these yeah, things. Sure, we do. It's written by Hispanic. He speaks Spanish like I do, so we mm-hmm. both read it in Spanish. He writes proof that Pope Francis' comments approving of gay civil unions were translated accurately. Yeah, even the um, the archbishop from uh, from uh, Argentina. Yeah. Uh, he also said, yeah, that's what he meant. That's what he said in Spanish is civil unions. That's what the word means. So the article says, as you're probably aware, there's a lot of controversy surrounding the recently revealed statements from Pope Francis expressing his support from same-sex civil unions. Uh, one EWTM priest in particular, Father Agustino Torres, released a video where he basically said, no, he, uh, that's not what he said. But this article, Gil- Gilberto Garcia Jones, and myself, Jesse Romero, who speaks Spanish as well, he writes, as a native speaker and as a lawyer, I'm afraid that the good friar from EWTN is mistaken in his arguments. I, I, I get it. Father Agustino is trying to do damage control. I get it. Right. I, mean, I, you know, right. I know it's like they say in the Bible, cover your father's nakedness. You know, when they saw Noah having sex, you know, uh, his sons walked in there backwards and tried to cover him with it. I get that, you know, but we're, we're past that, Terry. We've got to be honest and forthright about what's going on in the church. So he says, the, the Spanish writer says, yes, the Pope uses the term convivencia civil, which is the way you say uh, in Spanish. Yeah, that's the way you say it in Spanish, civil unions in Spanish, which have translated literally would mean civil coexistence. That's the literal translation. The problem with this interpretation 
is that it ignores the crucial fact that Pope that, that the Pope was referring to statements he made as the Cardinal of Buenos Aires during the debate on same-sex marriage and homosexual civil unions in Argentina. Because in 2002, <coughs> after Bergoglio was installed as Cardinal of Buenos Aires, Buenos Aires passed a local law legalizing same-sex civil unions. And this was followed by other local jurisdictions around Argentina. And eventually in 2008, same-sex civil unions were adopted nationally by the government. And as always happens, same-sex civil unions opened the door to same-sex marriage because by 2010, Argentina accepted what? Same-sex marriage. Exactly. So the key, the key thing is to understand here that in Argentina, same-sex civil unions are referred to as uniones convivenciales. In daily usage, the Pope's word, convivencia civil, it means the same. It's synonymous with uniones convivenciales. The former is singular, the latter is plural. And this is even more clear when you, when you consider that the context the Pope is speaking of is the forming a family union. So, uh, although he didn't use the word uniones, which means union, it would be nonsensical to interpret what he said in any other way because a ley de convivencia civil is a law for homosexual families to be recognized by law, which is precisely what a homosexual civil union or una unión convivencial actually means in Argentina. There's no wiggle room here, Terry. No, I get it, Jess. And, and I know there, un, un, undoubtedly there are times when the Pope has spoken in an ambiguous way that might have been purposefully misunderstood by the media. But in this case, I'm telling you, I'm a Spanish speaker. I know the Spanish regionalisms and colloquialism. Yeah. The author of this article is a Spanish speaker and a lawyer. And anybody who speaks Spanish, we know what he said. There's no doubt what the Pope meant. Uh, is that he supported and supports same-sex civil unions. Very painful for me to admit this, oh, yes. but this is an irrefutable fact, Terry. It is the fact. And Jess, here's my take on the Holy Father. We pray for him every day after our rosary, and I want everybody Amen. to... I just gave a talk last night to some men's group about that very Good fact, job, praying please. for them. Good but, job. but Jess, uh, this is tied into back in August 18th, another article where Pope Francis praises a nun for opening up a transgender home for men claiming to be women, and he calls them girls. You see, out of charity, but it's false. You know what it is? It's confirming people in their sinfulness. Don't call them girls. They're men. That's the way God made them. And Holy Father, I know you want to be welcoming to everybody, but you know the gospel is welcoming in truth. You can't tell somebody, a man, that they're a woman just because he wants to be a woman. And so I, I'm, I'm correcting you in all humility because I want to see not only you get to heaven, but all the people you're leading get to heaven. And when you give this message that that uh, civil unions uh, you know, are, are a good thing because it gives them protection, we're forgetting about the protection of their eternal salvation. I'm 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 agreeing with the Pope that they sh that that homosexual people need, should not be discriminated. Jesse, here's my con analogy I gave you, bro. If I'm a I'm landlord, which I am, and I'm going to rent my house to you for two thousand dollars a month, but if you're a homosexual, you're going to pay ten thousand dollars a month. That's discrimination, right there. But here's the point: don't tell them that their union is okay because what happens is these same Civil unions start to have kids. They adopt kids. They rent other people's wombs, women's wombs, to have a baby. And then that's child abuse. You see how it leads to sin, Jesse? And it leads to abusing God's children. So we have to be kind of tough and just say, you know what? You have same-sex attraction. You got to be faithful. You got to have chastity like Jess Romero and myself. Single people have to have chaste lives. And that's what our friends, Jesse, who are same-sex attracted people who are living, you know, chastity and they're in groups like Courage, they say, look, we can do this with God's grace. And when they hear what the Holy Father did, every single friend of mine, Jesse, that I spoke with who has same-sex attraction, they were devastated. They said, Holy Father, that's not confirming us. You're, you're telling me I should go back to my passions. And Jess, yeah. I hate to say it that clearly, but that's the message. It's a bad message to give to God's children, in my humble opinion. Terry, uh, the, the Advocate magazine, yep. which is an LGBT magazine, 
in 2013, they named Pope Francis the person of the year. He was the front cover. Yeah, for, for, for the good reason that they, they support what he's doing. Well, because they, they see that he's homosexual friendly. Yeah. He's homosexual friendly. Right. He's Unlike 2,000 years of history. And, and you know what, Jess? Let me jump in. The last and it all time, started, Terry, with the who am I to judge back exactly. in, in 2013. And, and That's where he basically let people know where he was coming from. And, Jess, if we go back to the 11th century, we had a similar situation in the clergy that homosexuality was rampant. They, and also, even the priests were living with their girlfriends I mean, this was this. So this is not the first time this problem has happened to us. And we just need to acknowledge that we have to go with God's laws. And that's why the next article we talk about, Jesse, with Cardinal Mueller, he lays it out and re really reaffirms. Let's get, let's get well, we're going to we're going to take a quick break. But okay. after we come back from the break, yeah. this is going to build your faith up and Jesus Christ and his bride, the church, Amen. because the perennial teachings of the church will do that every single time. Jesse, you're going to be. Uh, giving some talks on the 7th of November. Actually, we recorded you years ago on What Every Catholic Needs to Know series. We've got Dr. Scott Hahn. We have uh, Tim Staples, Steve Ray, uh, Father Bill Casey, Dr. Michael Barber, Dr. Brent Petrie, two good Bible teachers, Kimberly Hahn, and many more. That's going to be on the 7th of November. If you're not, if you haven't signed up to come to this virtual conference, call 877-526-2151. Or go online to Virgin Most Powerful Radio. And also, we have got the Spiritual Warfare Conference. People are signing up for that in January. Wow. Jess, it goes by fast. And also, Jesse, we will be celebrating our third anniversary for Virgin Most Powerful and in January. And we're growing, Tony. It oh. looks like we're growing. I just, uh, yeah. if, if we keep putting out just the truth and yeah. charity like we're doing, yeah. once again, I think uh, we're going to keep attracting more and more listeners. And how do we... Are lo- People are looking, Terry, for are. spiritual guidance and they spiritual are. instruction and spiritual direction. Jesse, if people will just take the YouTube channel that we're on, we, we get over 1,000 to 2,000 new YouTube subscribers every single week. So just hit that subscribe button and share it, share it with your friends. The social media is exploding here at Virgin Most Powerful Radio. And I also want to just thank those people who are our monthly donors for years, Jesse. These people have been supporting us to pay the monthly bills. And my heart goes out to you yeah. because I know it's, times are tough financially. But you know what? You've been helping us. And, I, and a big thank from Jess and myself Absolutely. because we know we couldn't do it without the partnership with our monthly donors. And if you want to become nope. a monthly donor, folks, you can get about 20 hours of programming every single week month from us for free because you're a $25 a month donor. The way to do it is call 877-526-2151 or go to virginmostpowerfulradio.org. Up next, Cardinal Mueller. His Pope's endorsement of homosexual civil unions has no authority for Catholics. He's going to set it straight and he's going to give you faith in Jesus and his church. We'll be right back. A great man once said that evil is powerless if the good are unafraid. Well, you and I have a rendezvous with destiny. We'll preserve for our children this, the last best hope of man on earth, or we'll sentence them to take the last step into a thousand years of darkness. We're at war with the most dangerous enemy that has ever faced mankind and has long climbed from the swamp to the stars. And it's been said if we lose this war, and in so doing lose this great way of freedom of ours, history will report with the greatest astonishment that those that had the most to lose did the least to prevent it from happening. Well, I think it's high time now that we ask ourselves if we still even know the freedoms that were intended for us by our founding fathers. Every generation of Americans needs to know that freedom exists, not to do what you like, but having the right to do what you ought. You weren't made to fit in, my brothers and sisters. You are born to stand out. Set yourself apart from this corrupt generation. Be saints. God bless you. Our nation is too full of those that are crying down. Down with the police. Down with the churches. Down with teachers. Down with government. Can you build anything down? You cannot. Certainly time in our nation to change our words. And let's begin now to use the word up. Up from all of this filth. Up from this violence. Up from this indifference of courts. Up 
up to the hid battlements of eternity, up, up to God. This is Terry Barber. I want to thank you for your support here at Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Here's an easy way to do it. If you're going to sell or buy a house, call Real Estate for Life, 877-543-3871, because they're going to get you a Christ-centered agent to purchase your home or to sell your home. And at the close of escrow, a portion of his commission goes right back to Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Call 877-543-3871. Thank you so much for your support. Welcome back to the Terry and Jesse Show. To join the conversation, call 888-526-2151. Now, here's Terry and Jesse. These are the best of times. These are the worst of times. <laughs> Amen, brother. That's uh, the, the line from A Tale of Two Cities That's by right. Charles Dickens. Dickens. But you know what? It's true. We have hope. Yeah. Hope in the promises of Jesus Christ. Amen. Period. Amen. And, and we all know that uh, that uh, our class reunion, Terry, is coming soon. Big Every time. one of us, when uh, you drop dead and uh, you go before the judgment seat of Christ, yeah. you will go to your exit interview. Yep. And we got to strive to live in a state of grace so that we can go to that class reunion. And uh, Terry, let's go into uh, Jesse, Cardinal th- Mueller. This this article really built me up because it oh. reaffirmed our perennial teachings. The former prefect for the Congregation of the Doctrine of the Faith explains the source sense of limits of papal authority, noting that some popes have erred throughout history. When you read history, you get it. He says, in light of the recent controversial words by Pope Francis endorsing civil unions for same-sex couples, Cardinal Mueller explained in a new interview today in Italy the nature of the papacy and the limits of its authority. He insists that the Pope has to serve God and his teaching, adding that there are moments where Catholics have to criticize many ideas and actions of individual popes. He gives examples. Such questioning, however, does not lead to questioning the divine mission and mandate of the Pope as the successor of Peter the Cardinal explains. Now, Jesse, this article, I almost want to give it all because he, he does such a magnificent yeah. job of building up. Continue, I, Jess. Yep. Yeah. Uh, his words can be helpful for many Catholics who are facing the situation that they have to contradict yeah. their own Pope. <clears throat> I hear you. But speaking with the Italian newspaper, the Verta. Cardinal Mueller, yeah. La, La Verita, about the recent papal words about same-sex civil unions, Cardinal Mueller pointed out that that, quote, these private pastoral musings of the Pope are not a locus theologicus and have, in other words, they're not the reference point of theology. Nope. And they have no authority for a Catholic Christian. He says, the faith stems from God's revelation. Amen. And not from manipulative wording and framing presented by theological and political influencers. Now, let's remember that Cardinal Mueller is the former prefect of the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith. Mm-hmm. And he should still be there, but the St. Gallen Mafia made sure that Pope Francis got rid of him. Yep. Yep. He also insisted that, he also insisted, Cardinal Mueller, that, quote, marriage is a lifelong union between a man and a woman. And he added that any sexual union outside of marriage is objectively a grave sin. Amen. Close quote. And uh, what's this? What's all of this about? Well, because of the new documentary film yeah. that premiered in Italy on the 21st of October, uh, where Pope Francis made a comment, he called for homosexual civil unions to be legalized. And speaking of homosexual civil unions, Pope Francis said, quote, what we have to create is a civil union, is a civil union law that that way they are legally covered. I stood up for that, close quote. He was referring that he stood up for that back in Argentina. That's true. So further commenting on these words coming from from the Pope, Cardinal Mueller points out that the papal limits have been defined by the Council of Florence as well as the First and Second Vatican Council and that, quote, the authority of papal teaching and governing office is not based on the limited personality of, of any occupier of the throne of Peter, close quote. So starting with Peter, yep. Cardinal Mueller says 
that the authority of the Pope is based on the divine mission. What is that? Here it is. His divine mission, his authority, which calls for the religious obedience of all Catholics, is merely to profess that which was revealed to him by the Heavenly Father, namely, that Jesus is not just some kind of prophet or moral model, but rather the Son of God, and to whom, as the Son, all power in heaven and on earth has been given. Amen. And Cardinal Mueller continued by saying, the apostles and their successors only teach that which has been given to them by Jesus. Repeat that. that. Repeat this that. Is, this is the most important part. This is what's called sacra traditio, That's right. sacred tradition. You got it. That, that bishops and cardinals and popes could, quote, only teach that, which has been given to them by Jesus, well, close quote. Because what's been given to them by Jesus is supernatural. It's a supernatural faith, right. which is directly aimed at God, who does not and cannot deceive. And so such teaching, it, it excludes, by the way, it excludes a blind obedience towards man or, or, or you know, any personality cults of their leaders or totalitarian mm-hmm. systems. Right. We don't believe in blind obedience. Our faith is supernatural. It's revealed and it's passed on. That's what tradition means. Paradosis in Greek, it's passed on from one pope to another, from the bishop, one bishop to another, and they're supposed to safeguard, not change, not modify, not give a different uh, you know, uh, opinion. They're supposed to safeguard what 2,000 popes and the church teachings have always said, what we call the perennial teachings of the church terry yeah we call it the deposit of the faith yeah. that's what vatican one calls that the pope's job is to to safeguard the deposit of faith yeah jesse in this sense religious obedience here is a is like you said a part of a supernatural faith remember what bishop strickland said we've lost our supernatural outlook on our faith in our mm-hmm. church which is directly aimed at god which does not and cannot deceive such teachings excludes then a blind obedience towards men as it's known jesse mentioned that now Cardinal Mueller made it clear that one can and must criticize many ideas and actions of individual popes without questioning the mission mandate of the pope as the successor of Peter. And that's what we're doing, Jess, exactly that. Even though Jesus made St. Peter the first pope, but at the same time, Jesus also heavily criticized him, especially for denying Christ during his passion. He told him, get behind me, Satan. Satan. Yes, that's right in the Bible. You can't get any bigger. There's no bigger criticism than the Son of God calling you Satan. Oh, my God. Therefore, Satan, Terry. Exactly. Therefore, St. Jerome, St. Augustine, as well as St. Thomas, all praised St. Paul for his courage, for his most fervent criticism of Peter, and at the same time praised St. Peter for his humility with which he accepted his fraternal correction. I'm praying that Pope Francis has that humility, Jesse. I really mean that. I Harry, want he's him. already been corrected several times. Yeah, but and he ha- the dubia. Yeah. I, the dubia is what I'm <laughs> saying. At the same and, time, and so he can, far he hasn't right. he hasn't accepted no. for like like Peter. His example's Peter. That's Paul, right. Paul put him in check, and he just says, "Well, I kept his mouth shut." Like, why? Well, yeah, you're right. I was wrong. Yeah, that's humility. That's what we expect, Terry. That's, that's right. That's, At the time, continued German Cardinal Saint Peter did an immeasurable service for the unity of the church. And Jesse, Cardinal Mueller is doing a great service for the church. And Burke. And, and Burke Schneider, and Snyder. And, 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 and all those guys. And, and Joseph but Strickland. Strickland, right. So continue where Mueller's presenting the situation. Cardinal Mueller, Cardinal Mueller yeah, yeah. <clears throat> presented the situation between St. Peter and Paul, where St. Paul withstood St. Peter to his face. It's in the Galatians right. chapter 1 and 2. Right there. As a model for our church today. Yep. Exactly. He says... The uh, Cardinal Mueller says, yeah. quote, the, the exercise of the primacy of the Roman church has always has, has always to be guided by the two apostles, princes who with their blood of martyrdom have bought for the church of Rome, the primacy in communion with the Episcopal local churches. Wow. So Cardinal Mueller, Insist. he's also insisted that there were moments in the history of the church where popes have erred in the past. That's right. And he says. It happened historically that even individual popes were insecure with regard to the questions of faith or even gravely erred. So here the German cardinal reminds us of the very limited nature of the dogma of papal infallibility. Of infallibility, yeah. He says the latter only takes effect when a pope speaks ex cathedra and presents the teaching of the entire church, a revealed doctrine of the faith. Thus a pope cannot 
impose his opinions, that's I said it, his subjective values and limited philosophical and theological theories upon the church as if they were revealed truth or not. So any new concept of revelation according to which new inspirations could lead a pope to transcend that which has always been taught by the Catholic Church is clearly criticized by the prelate and the cardinals and bishops are doing their job right now, Terry. Yes, they are. And, you know, before we finish this article, I want to say before the break here that the Holy Father's formation in Germany has something to do with some of the things he's saying, Jesse. I'll be honest with you. I looked up who he was, where he got his education from, unlike St. John Paul II and Pope Benedict. Uh, I, Thomas Aquinas was not given much in with his formation, so I can understand mm. that. Now here, the cardinals reject any theory <clears throat> according to which there exists an ongoing revelation and that Pope Francis is now divinely inspired in this new ideas. I've said this from day one. Revelation has definitively ended in its, con- in its uh, considerative reality with the death of the last apostle. It ends. That's church teaching. Mueller insisted that. Popes and bishops are merely servants of Christ. Jesse, I'm going to say that ourselves. Popes and bishops, they're merely servants of Christ and witnesses to the once and for all occurred revelation of God and Jesus Christ and not the recipients of some new revelation which surpasses Christ or even reduces him to a pre Lemary sage to a higher knowledge of God. Now, just that's what Mormonism says. Or other religions, they, they have ongoing revelations. We don't. So any pseudo-intellectual talks of the paradigm shift, we've heard about that, haven't we? The paradigm shift. Paradigm shift. We've heard the that liberals. for years from the liberals. Right. It's clearly assessed as being an undisguised heresy which falsifies the word of God and which turns the wine of the marriage feast of Cana back into water. Did you hear he used the H word, Jess? That's right. Heresy. Cardinal Mueller says, look at we justly defend the authentic teaching on the papacy towards those Catholics, but he also says there's no way of absolutizing the ecclesial political power of the Pope and of his mission. Right. In other words, there's an error, Terry, it's called ultramontanism. There you go. You nailed which, it. Which uh, essentially means that everything that the Pope says is magisterial. Oh, the no. Pope burped. The no. Pope burped. Oh, that's magisterial. Oh, he, he said a joke. Oh, that's magisterial. Oh, he uh, he commented on a soccer game. Who's going to win? That's mad. No, it's not. Nope. No. It's it's very limited. It's right. And it's only when he's teaching on faith and morals. And w- again, it's limited to also... When he's passing on the faith, once and for all revealed to the saints, Jude chapter, Jude chapter 1, verse 3. Right. And he's passing on that faith uh, revealed to the saints that he's been given by, by the, his predecessor and that predecessor and that predecessor all the way to Peter. Anything new, any opinions, any, any theological musings, they're not bound by, Catholics aren't bound to, li- to listen and obey it. Well said. Let's talk about spiritual warfare when we come back, about what a Satan, what a exorcist has unmasking Satan's open spiritual warfare in America. Up next. Hebrews 11.3 says, By faith we come to understand. According to St. Augustine, understanding is the reward of faith. Therefore, seek not to understand that you may believe, but believe that you may understand. May God grant us a strong living faith in Him and His divine plan of salvation and help us to believe so that we may understand. How does the baby eat? Can the baby hear me? How did the baby get in there? Wow, a pregnancy can sure generate a lot of questions, but what's important is that a baby is a baby inside and out of the womb, not just after birth, but nine months before. 
at conception. That's right, every baby is a miracle. Hello, my name is Marianne Kuharski. I'm the director of Pro-Life Across America. If you know someone who is pregnant or in need of alternatives or assistance or would like to support the work of Pro-Life Across America, please visit our website at prolifeacrossamerica.org or better yet, simply dial pound 250 on your cell phone and say the key word pro-life. Pro-Life Across America is non-political and totally educational. A baby's heart is beating 18 days from conception. Pro-Life Across America, the Billboard People. This is Terry Barber. I want to thank you for your support here at Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Here's an easy way to do it. If you're going to sell or buy a house, call Real Estate for Life, 877-543-3871 because they're going to get you a Christ-centered agent to purchase your home or to sell your home. And at the close of escrow, a portion of his commission goes right back to Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Call 877-543-3871. Thank you so much for your support. Welcome back to the Terry and Jesse Show. To join the conversation, call 888-526-2151. Now, here's Terry and Jesse. Terry, there's a lot of evil in the world right you now. You got this it. Ex- this exorcist talks about it. Yep. Uh, Monsignor Stephen Rossetti. I mean, think about that. Just mm-hmm. uh, communism. Open your eyes. Yeah, open your uh, eyes. Occupy Wall Street, yep. Antifa. Yep. Mexican cartels, terrorists. A woman just got beheaded yesterday in a Catholic church in France. Head cut off. Oh, time out, time out. Was it a Mormon that did it? Nope, it was oh. a Muslim terrorist. Oh, I'm shocked. Yep, and I'm sure he read the Quran, and uh, the Quran justified his actions because yep. that's what it says to do in Surah 9, to chop cut people's heads off that are not Muslims. Ouch. And so, uh, yeah, we got political evil, Terry, in this country, communism. You got one party that's a party of death, a party of abortion. Uh, the social media all tilts evil to the left, mainstream media, colleges, u- universities. Oh, yeah. Yep. And then, exorcist, and then, uh, it, yeah, the exorcist says... Satan's Open Spiritual Warfare in America. That's the title of his article. Yep. He says, pray, pray, pray. (laughs) He says, God usually keeps Satan on a time. He said, the the priest says, uh, Monsignor, there's the exorcist, uh, uh, Father Rossetti says, however, in this time, it appears that the prince of this world has been almost completely unleashed. Oh, man. It used to be that Satan did his evil in a hidden way. Now, it's open warfare. Holy statues are pulled down. Sacred images are being desecrated. Religion is being mocked. And God's laws are rejected. One of the strongest signs of Satan's presence is hatred for the Catholic Church. Churches are burning, literally. Another strong sign of Satan's presence is discord, violence, and death. Sounds like uh, Fulton Sheen says, uh, Oh yeah. he says the threefold attack of Satan is nudity, violence, and, and division. Yep. So pretty much the same thing. What's going on? We see this everywhere. The increasing civil discord in this country has erupted into open conflict. You've seen F- Philadelphia is on fire right now. That's right. Uh, blue, blue state, blue city, and uh, yep, they're destroying it right now as we speak. And some weeks ago, Father says, one of our specially gifted persons said, quote, the demonic is way more active than before, their activity is more pronounced, and they have less fear than normal. Their limit seems to be non-existence lately. Their violent actions have been increasingly daring and brutal. So uh, this is somebody in in Father uh, Rossetti's exorcist team who's uh, telling Father, and usually the priest in the exorcist team, they usually have one person that usually is very set. They call them sensitives. These are people that are that have a heightened awareness or a heightened a heightened gift of discernment, which is a it's a charismatic gift in First Corinthians chapter twelve. Mm-hmm. And a good exorcist usually picks somebody on the team, you know, a psychologist, a psychiatrist, good holy prayer, men and women. But they also try to get one person that has the gift of discernment. They 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 can discern what demons, how many demons, the names of the demons. So this this person on father's team has just said that there's a heightened awareness of the diabolical right now and jesse, uh, jesse let me yeah, just jump ahead. in and say something to you but because yeah. i know father ripperger has made a comment i've heard him on his youtube channel say this that there's yeah the devil's got a uh, you know he's out running around right now because lack of prayer and people receiving the sacraments can you talk a little bit about that because i think that's what's happening right now jess yeah terry what's uh 
fact, it's in my book, Lord, Prepare My Hands for Battle. So I'm pulling up my book right now so I can actually get with Father. Yeah, he said it. He's, yeah, Father Ripperger said this Yeah, uh, off the top of my head. He said, uh, the reason we have more of the diabolical right now, yep. and I just flipped to my book, he said, is because we have less people being baptized. That's the first thing. Because remember, remember, baptism is a minor exorcism. Yep. So if you have less people being baptized, guess what? That's it. You're going to have more diabolical activity. That's just Makes that's sense. the way it works. Yep. Another thing I'm reading from my book, the reason he said there's, that there's more diabolical activity right now, he says less people are getting married in the Catholic Church. Less pe- I'll get it repeat Look, again. The numbers are astounding. Yeah, yeah Father Ripperger says, yeah, baptism and church weddings, when they decrease in society, demonic activity increases. Mm-hmm. That's on page 80 of my book. He says, the decline in morality also of a society also accompanies an increase in demonic activity. Is there a decline in morality? Yeah. Terry, when you have the Bishop of Rome, the Pope of the Catholic Church, saying that we should have civil unions, I, I can't even imagine how much more of a decline there is in society than the Bishop of Rome making that statement. This is just going to open sexual license to all the millennials, high school kids that are already struggling with their disordered passions. And when they hear the Pope say this, they're saying, you know what they're going to say? Game on. But Jesse here, but to add to that, a solution is you, our listener, say, living a holy life, praying prayers of, of a spiritual warfare. The article yeah, that's talks what the about father this. says here. He's, yeah. Go ahead, Jeff. Here, now here's a solution. Yeah, that's Ma- where I want to Ma- go. Monsignor Rossetti. He gives it. Yeah, he says this is a solution. He says, it's time for us to take up our own weapons. That's it. One of the most powerful is the rosary. Yeah. St. Father, uh, Father Pio actually called it a weapon. <laughs> and the Blessed Virgin Mary told St. Ba- Dominic yeah. that the rosary is my battering ram. Did you hear that? I love it. That's, that's what cops use to break down doors of drug dealers. It looks like a big log. She calls the rosary a battering ram to St. Dominic. Father Rosetti says, pray it daily to cast out demons and to invoke the aid of the Blessed Mother. Another weapon is the pious reception of Holy Communion. Yep, it's right there in the Bible. Revelation chapter 12. De- the devil fears the blood of Jesus. Yep. Holy Communion. Offer Jesus' presence in the world for this country and for the world. And finally, Father recommends daily deliverance prayers, especially priests in, in an exercise of their spiritual authority. Daily deliverance prayers, St. Michael the Archangel, the Our Father is a deliverance prayer. The Anima Christi is a deliverance prayer. Go on the internet, take down Father Ripperger's prayers. They're called Auxilium Christianorum. They're in my book, they're in his book, they're on the internet. And Father says, Jesus has won the battle, but how many poor souls will be lost in these terrible days? Pray, pray, pray for the conversion of sinners and that saint would once again be tightly tightly leashed. And uh, he says... He, now he quotes St. John Vianney, who was regularly attacked by demons at night. He was especially viciously attacked the night before a big sinner came to confession. And when St. John Vianney experienced these intense demonic attacks at night, he knew Satan would be losing one of his prizes the following day. A wretched sinner would be coming to Christ. So uh, only hours after Father M- Monsignor Rossetti's last blog, because he blogs, he's an exorcist that blogs, he says... And his Exorcist Diary 83, which reveals Satan's current activity in our nation and in our world, there was some, there was notably some vicious pushback. It was more intense than usual. We can only surmise that the wileys of Satan were truly unmasked and his plans would be foiled if people would respond to the blog's request and pray. So Father says, I ask each one of you to redouble your efforts. Amen. Pray, pray, pray. <clears throat> say the rosary. Say the St. Michael the Archangel prayer. Offer your holy communion for the deliverance of our nation and our world. And say deliverance prayers in these critical times. Your prayers matter. Terry? God bless, Father. And remember the message of Fatima. Remember about pr- that there are souls out there that are going to hell because there's no one there to pray and make sacrifices for. Think of all the people right now that are lost in the world today. Just open your door and look outside, and you're like, what are people doing? Well, this is where you, our listener, can really affect the entire world with your prayers. Do you remember last week I prayed I, I prayed a video of a, of a, a lady that uh, she was saved because one 
jogger would pray to Hail Mary for the woman who was having all kinds of problems, and our Lord took that as a prayer to help her save her life? That's what I'm asking you to do. Every time you pray during the day, even like I say this little prayer, we give thee thanks, almighty, all merciful, and all loving God for all the blessings that we have received from thy bounty through Christ our Lord. Amen. And on and on. Little prayers throughout the day. The Angelus is coming up in what, six minutes? Okay. Mm. Pray the Angelus. Get the rosary out. Do all these. Make it, Live in the presence of God throughout the day. And all these other things that are going on, they're not going to rattle you. You know why? Because you're living in the presence of God. And you're living a life of, of, of sanctifying grace. Jesse, let's finish up on this. What can the devil do to someone who's living in the state of grace? Absolutely nothing. He could just tempt you. Ordinary yeah. temptation. Right, he could do right. it to everybody. But he can't uh, obsess you, oppress you, exactly. possess you, infest your house. There you go. You're protected. Living in a state of grace gives you, as St. Paul says in Ephesians chapter 6, the full armor of God. When you're living in mortal sin, guess what? You don't Open have the up. armor of God. Yep. You're like a soldier naked in a battlefield. Okay, I'm going to be just That's graphic. Just, yeah. How would you like to go into war? Would you, uh, you know, think about it in the time of Christ. Would you like to go to war like, dressed like a Spartan or like a Roman legionnaire? Or would you like to go into battle naked? Yeah. That's what happens when you're in a state of mortal sin. You have no armor and you're naked against the enemy. You have no defensive or offensive weapons. These are critical times. Your prayer matters. Unite your prayers to Our Lady and the infinite power of Jesus Christ on the cross. And uh, unite your prayers to St. Michael the Archangel and your guardian angel. And know that Satan's plans will be destroyed when Christ comes back. But uh, we want you to be part of the team, Terry. Yep, and I want to remind everybody... Here at Virgin Most Powerful, who's not aware, but we have some really great programs. After this program, we have Dr. Sandoval, who's going to be speaking. He's a psychiatrist, a doctor, and he's also involved in uh, the deliverance ministry. Yeah. yeah, exorcisms and things like that. He's the doctor. So you won't want to miss that coming up. And also, uh, you know, Jesus 911, Jess, we got to get a plug for that. Every single day you listen to Jesus 911, it's all on spiritual warfare. Jess, you're taking Fulton Sheen's material right now. Every Wednesday, I'll, I will be going through a different lecture from Archbishop Sheen on the diabolical. Oh, gosh. on the di- And then myself and generally Dr. Dan Schneider, he's yes. always here on Wednesdays, mm-hmm. he basically unpeels it. Uh, and and my Dr. Dan Snyder, he sits on an exorcism team right now in his diocese, and he's a and he's been an instructor on healing, deliverance, and exorcism for like seven or six or seven years. Good. Uh, uh, and uh, he's just a gift to this to this radio network. Let me tell you. Absolutely. And uh, Jesse, the uh, five stones of of uh, King David. Can we uh, f- finish up with that? Because this is really fitting with a solution to live holy. Five life. stones, uh, David against Goliath. Okay, First Samuel seventeen. Pray your rosary every day, and remember, every time you pray, pray from your heart. The rosary is a weapon to defeat heresy. Amen. Number two, go to Mass as often as possible. Go visit Jesus as often as possible. Sign up for a weekly holy hour at your parish. Three, read your Bible every day. No excuses. Demons hate. They can't be in the presence of a Catholic reading the Bible. It causes them pain, and they flee. Many saints have told us that, like St. John Chrysostom. Four, Penance, add penance to your life, especially especially Fridays. But every day, find some something you can do to do, offer penance because penance it drives away the diabolical. And number five, remain in a state of grace by going to monthly confession. If you're in mortal sin right now, hey, get the confession ASAP. Derry, what's our role to get to heaven? I ask Jesse the question every single day. Jess, what state should we be living in? State of grace. Don't live in a state of mortal sin. Don't quit. No surrender. No excuses. <laughs> know your Catholic faith. Live your Catholic faith. Spread your Catholic faith. Remember, St. Father says, pray hope and don't worry. Terry. Full sheen ahead here at Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Saint Good Husband job, Rich. Prayer for priests. Oh, my Jesus, I beg thee on behalf of the whole church, grant it love and the light of thy spirit, and give power to the words of priests, so that hardened hearts might be brought to repentance and return to Thee, O Lord. Lord, give us holy priests. Thou Thyself maintain them in holiness. O Divine and Great High Priest, may the power of Thy mercy accompany them everywhere and protect them from the devil's traps and snares, which are continually being set for the souls of priests. May the power of Thy mercy, O Lord, 
shatter and bring to naught all that might tarnish the sanctity of priests. For thou canst do all things. Amen. Virgin most powerful, pray for us. Virgin Most Powerful Radio, sharing the gospel with clarity and charity. Dr. Luis Sandoval is accomplished in the fields of mental health and spiritual warfare. A medical doctor, board certified in neurology, psychiatry, and family medicine, he is also a psychiatrist for the Roman Catholic Diocese.